Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT and I'm here with the Dutz Dutz King, Joey. Boss, anyone can get it. <laughs> now, we are talking about self-defense versus sports jujitsu. Wait, well, we've got to address censorship first. Okay. Right. Well, we're going to curse? We're not going to curse. No, we're going to curse. So here's the shit. We came back. We had this thing where our YouTube videos started getting like downgraded because we were cursing too much. And here's the deal, guys. We rely on the advertising revenue that we comes do. through YouTube because Sad but true. we do all this kind of stuff for free, right? It's part of the game. So, you know, the YouTube revenue is handy, but if the ads can't be featured because we're cursing too much, then we don't get the revenue, blah, blah, blah. So then we kind of had a knee-jerk reaction. We were like, all right, we've got to tame, we've got to like pull it, reel it in on the yep. swear words. And I can't no, remember no, said no, curse. I no, never no, curse no. words. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so anyway, we got some feedback from you guys in the comments. A couple people like, man, like. What are you doing? Shit's changed. Like, what's going on? I felt like I was hanging out with my couple, like, you know, chat like right. older brothers. You sold out. And I was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. I dig it. And whatever. Can still be mindful of maybe not swearing all the time because it's probably just not something to rely on <laughs> in, in use of language. But we thought, well, the solution is we just don't do anything to the audio podcast. We, do, we already don't. So right. if, you, if you do listen, wherever you listen to your podcasts... It's not censored. Nothing censored there. Not at all. Same shit. Yeah. But if you watch it on YouTube, you are going to cop. There's going to be a little bit of, uh, not even bleeping, but just. Yeah, right. Yeah. So whatever. And so if you really want that, you know, if you want to feel like you're in there in the gym with us, talking the shit, maybe catch the audio version and, you know, you get the, the, the full rub. The full experience. All right. Sorry to cut you off. No, that's all good because, mate, it's relevant. And I, I think a few people might be cursing about this. Self-defense versus sports jiu-jitsu. So there is plenty of gyms out there who are advocating BJJ as a self-defense method or they have a, a kind of co combatives type element. Um, and then there's gyms that just focus on training people for competition, gi or no gi. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the two different approaches. And then we're also going to talk about how uh, sports – BJJ, as it's been kind of uh, evolved and classified, is actually pretty good for combat compared to maybe what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. So I want to start off by going, you know, sports versus self-defense, like traditional versus, you know, uh, I had heard someone say that if you don't put boxing gloves on when you practice your jiu-jitsu at least once a week, you're not practicing real jiu-jitsu. Right, yeah. You know, like if you don't practice to keep your hands up, if you don't practice to know how to defend yourself from your guard from potential strikes. That front headlock defense where they get you and then you like pick them up or whatever. Turn or someone bear hugs you from behind, you step behind now. Here's the thing. This is my general thing. And, and Joey and I have, have actually uh, had a significant disagreement about this before around self-defense. Mm. We may or may not get into that. No, let's but go there. Let's, let's just stay on the topic. <laughs> essentially, essentially, some schools will say, no, we're not going to show you how to do a birambolo because that's not going to work against knife defense. You know, like their yeah. whole mantra is you're going to come here and when you leave here, you're going to have skills that mean you have better awareness and you will be safer on the streets. Whereas other schools are like, just come in here, let's roll, learn the techniques. We don't care if you can street fight or not. You know, that's not yeah, what those one, those ones don't even talk about self defense, do they? No. It's not yeah. It's not part of their marketing, it's yeah. not part of their ethos, none of that. Whereas we do know like a lot of the very closely tied Gracie gyms yes. often have a self defense like module and white to blue belts often very heavy on the self defense aspect, the Gracie combatives, all that stuff, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And look, when I went to Gracie Baja back in two thousand and eleven I went to Gracie Baja in Baja, in Rio. There was 15 minutes of self-defense in there. It okay. was terrible. It was like an old school wrist lock, like someone grabs you and you do the wrist, which Turn is, up. yeah, wrist lock control down to the ground, which is something I learned when I was 10 years old doing Taekwondo. So it's like, you can't say that's original to jujitsu. And then the other one was the, um, the body grab. Your arms are by your side. Someone uh, yeah. bear hugs you from the back. You kind of, you sink your weight step behind, grab the legs and kind of put them to the Chip ground or whatever. Down, yeah. And look, <laughs> this isn't unique to Gracie Baja, so don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this to throw shade on 
Gracie Baja as a franchise or a, its legacy. I did something similar at Alliance. When we did the instructor training at Alliance, they showed us this series of self-defense moves. Yeah. Which in my head, I was like, this is kind of bullshit. Like, I just, this, for me, I didn't rate it because, like, not, not because if you're someone who's never done any combat, that's fine. Getting some awareness around this stuff is good. So I'm not undervaluing that. But if that person who's grabbing you, their intention is to throw you on your neck, you're going to get thrown on your neck. You know, if someone grabs you from behind, they got a body lock, you're, 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 you're gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? If somebody- if Someone who actually has bad intent they're not gets just you in one of those positions, there and that like, shit is probably not going to work. I have you. Yeah. And wait. Yeah. They're, you know, they're- What's your next move? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not- So here's the thing. I feel- for the for the best part in in my experience in martial arts what i've seen under the banner of self defense doesn't feel as real whereas i've also seen krav maga where some scenarios where they're like well i've got an ak47 and you're standing there and this is how we you know okay lots of screaming and I also was like, well, I still don't feel that's real either. I'm not saying that it, it has no role to play, but then we were just saying before about take anyone from the ADCC, <laughs> take any of those dudes, put them in a bar in a just regular attire, and some idiot decides, you know, how many videos have we seen, whether it was like Matt Serra or Henzo Gracie or someone who just doesn't know what kind of animal is in front of them. Yeah. And they got hit. They got taken down. They it, got sat on <clears throat> into a bad situation. I feel that sports jiu-jitsu and competition jiu-jitsu has uh, evolved to a point where I feel that they, that idea of like, oh, they're athletes and they're not fighters, is I actually think that's changed. Right. My, I'm saying people who practice for sports jiu-jitsu can be effective in the streets. That's what I'm saying. So a couple things there. Let's, let's, let's uh, unpack a little bit. The, the first part, let's go into that first part about self-defense generally and some of these techniques that we see that you're like, mm. that shit wouldn't work. That, like, that shit's not going to work against someone that has ill intent that is either hyper-adrenalized because they're about to attack or someone, i.e. me, drugs. or they're on drugs, yep. or they're fucking angry as fuck because they're got psychotic thoughts going through their head like that person is not coming at me with the hey grab the shirt and then wait or grab the sleeve yeah. or you know they're com they're coming with ill intent right so let's talk about like those techniques that you that you do see the stuff in jiu-jitsu i i don't want to throw shade personally on on the academies that that do that or the people that do that because there's got to be some value there is right no there, there is there's and even if that value is just it's some little bit empowering for the person that's doing it. And confidence. that's, yeah. And that builds the confidence for them then to stay with jujitsu and then they get into it and then they have a transformative experience through their time in jujitsu. That's great. But yeah, in terms of like the actual efficacy of that as self-defense techniques, I, I really find that hard to stomach. Cause I'm like, well, if we're going to spend 15 minutes on this or 30 minutes on this at every class, is any of this shit actually going to work for me? Yeah. Like, am I actually going to employ any of these techniques? Yeah, look, I for me personally, I am not a big believer in self-defense. And that's not, not that you can't defend yourself. But for example, if I was giving advice to my sister, and she said, I want to feel safer, I'd be like, okay, go learn Muay Thai, learn how to throw elbows, learn how to throw knees, take a few hits, check a kick, like learn these basics, get hit a bit, get familiar with getting hit. Like, get comfortable with being hit. Also, learn a couple of takedowns. I, I can show you some takedowns. Learn some clinch. Maybe learn a submission. If you've done six months of Muay Thai and you've also done a bit of jits, I believe you'll be better off than doing all this kind of wrist lock, you know, kind of, oh, they have a gun, spin the gun. Well, Steven Seagal bullshit. Like, I'm just not... I'm yeah, not can about I that. can I reframe what you said there? Then I think it's not that you're not about self defense. Like self defense works, but it's this commonly marketed self defense, self -defense. tactics. Yes. that you're like most of it's bullshit. Yeah. And if we look at like McDojo life, 
he's oh. basically shining a light on this whole industry that's been created around bullshit techniques, right? Yeah. So here's an interesting one for me, the Krav Maga thing. Yes. You see a lot of like McDojo Life shares a lot of like BS Krav Maga stuff. Yep. And um, even Sistema, sure. Russian martial art. People well, just like touching, using the force, motherfuckers no, fall down. But I, I've trained with a guy who's, who's well, ex-Russian. This is where I'm headed to. Sure. I've also seen some Krav Maga practitioners mm. that are f***ing savages. Yes. I've watched, uh, I had a mate who had actually done time in the Israeli army there you who go. was showing me some videos, not of a guy that he'd trained with, but of some training type stuff they'd done. And this guy was showing his students how when someone grabs you from behind with a knife to your neck, he's yep. like, this is how you get out of it. And what he was teaching them was like, you are going to have to sacrifice these three fingers. Wow. But you're going to put those fingers here. They're probably going to get cut off or at least like pretty detached. But that buys you time. And it's like Doesn't. highly practical shit. And, he, and they're drilling it under stress. Yeah. And like the, 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 ten, like the environment that they're in was really tense. And you're like, oh my God, this is, this is real shit, right? It's talking about, it's not like twist the wrist, break it, you know. Mm. So, you know, that sort of stuff I look at, I'm like, that's obviously effective I say obviously because there are people out there that are fighting, you know, like in battlefields, War. defending their nations right on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I don't want to like, I want to keep it clear that there's like two sides to this thing, isn't there? Yeah. And I, I, I agree with that. I've, I've trained with a bunch of guys, Koreans, Iranians, um, some African, African nation, where they did military service as young people. They had to. It was compulsory. Oh, you just finished high school? You go do military service. You're in the military for two to three years. Or you do it part-time while you're at uni. Whatever. Oh, they know how to load a gun. <laughs> you know, like, you you know, you know, have a black belt as a minimum requirement. The whole idea of being harder to kill is very much, like, ingrained. Yeah, if you're, if you're training to kill another person and not be killed, f that's real. That's cool. I'm amazing. Respect. I don't have that training, and that's why I've never try to espouse jujitsu as a form of self-defense but for sure knowing how to do some kind of uh, different techniques to protect yourself is helpful in the heat of the moment if you can remember but if you've never actually been sucker punched and then had to try and defend yourself while you're concussed you know, I'm not, <laughs> you know, you see those terrible videos where the instructor is just punching their, their students in the face <laughs> or slapping them or whatever. I'm not I'm not actually promoting that. But I think one of the most unrealistic things about the idea of self-defense is people practice in the same way jujitsu. If people people uh, have thrown a lot of shade on drilling because they're saying, oh, there's not enough real stress of the role in the situation. You do have to learn basic technique movement with minimal resistance. But then over time, you've got to up the resistance and you've got to gradually... yeah. You know, go really, live. Yeah, get used to that. <clears throat> and I'm not somebody. We were actually talking about um, knife before. We were talking about Salat and um, Kali, and you know, a, a friend of mine had um, made me aware of a, a system called a mock, which is derived from uh, Salat, which is all about live blade knife stuff. And he actually ended up shout out to James Ross from Melbourne. He was wearing protective James goggles Ross. and he went to a grading and they're doing live blade. They've got these things protecting their arms and the dude went like slash with the knife and it broke the protective glasses and gashed him. Oh shit. And during this, <laughs> you're like, this sounds, <laughs> this is not something you get your yeah. uh, 10 year old child into. One guy got cut and it was an arterial bleed and it was just, they kept sparring and he's, Blood is just going onto people <laughs> sitting, you know, cross-legged, <laughs> back straight. <sketch>. Ah. <laughs> you don't worry about any, like, uh, blood transmission viruses or anything. <laughs> and he was like, eh, I think I won't do this anymore. <laughs> this seems a, <laughs> seems a bit too bit intense. Full on. Yeah. And he's a very quiet guy. You wouldn't know that about him, but, he, you know, he, he's kind of, he's a trained killer. And anyway, long story short, this is what I wanted to say. I think there is a fine line between, like, the real... And if you're not fighting for your life every day, you're not in the military, then maybe you don't need to train to such an extent. But then also talking about the realities of combat. And I believe that, and this is the thing that I wanted to talk about, is like, let's look at, say, traditional jiu-jitsu as an, uh, 
how effective is traditional jiu-jitsu versus even Brazilian jiu-jitsu now? If we think of the evolution of a of a martial art. Yeah. Whereas say you've got someone who's really good at heel hooks. You've got some blue belt kid who's just studied the Danaher system, studied Craig, studied Lockie. It's like, I'm a leg lock assassin. And you've got someone who's like, right, I do traditional Japanese. I'm going to foot Japanese jiu-jitsu. I'm going to foot sweep you and, and, and arm bar you. And they just sit to the ground and they start leg entangling you. And you're like, oh, what's going on here? So the reason why I bring this up... Doesn't the traditional jiu-jitsu person stomp them in the face? They're, they're, they might, right. but then they might also just have their knee Leg. recode. It's true. Right, because this is the evolution of the technique. And, and I wanted to say that I wouldn't necessarily say that, oh, this, this, this young blue belt who has this fantastic theoretical hypothetical kid. I love this boogeyman that we all acknowledge, which is the blue belt with the heel hook technique. Man, I've seen it. I've seen it. I think he's like a purple or a brown belt now, but there was this kid out of dominance in, in, in uh, Melbourne who came in the adult division. He was like 16, just got his blue belt and pretty much ran a train on everybody. But he came with that inside heel hook game harder than pretty much anyone else. And I think he lost in the final, maybe to his coach. Who's bad a things belt. happen to bad people. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Grandma Joe. <laughs> so if we think about the evolution from the traditional martial arts, mm. self-defense, then you've got like more of a, a modern jujitsu. I'm not going to say that guy's winning a fight if you necessarily, if he's going up against some hardened jail time ex Muay Thai champion who's now been on meth and could just elbow you into the next life. But if we're just talking being better prepared for, you know, being in a, a situation of conflict on the street, having some training is helpful. But I'm going to say that if you train sports jujitsu, I don't think that that is sports jiu-jitsu, if you, whether you're training gi or no gi, I don't think that that is putting you in a worse position than someone who trains self-defense. That's what I'm saying. That's my right, posit. That's your, hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know if I agree with that fully. Okay. Like you're saying that like, it, it, you know, they're kind of equal. Well, I'm no, thinking no, no, not equal. I think it's whoever has practiced their game more effectively. Now, I'm sure that there's plenty of so, some very tough full contact karate guys out there who could just well, here's punch the, you in the throat and it's game over, right? Here's what, I, here's what I think that that doesn't take into account, which is that, and say this is kind of referencing that book, which is where we originally had our argument on. Yes. Meditations on Violence. Violence which, which I still have. Yeah, worth reading. I, yeah, it's, it's entertaining at the very least. It's a good book. But this guy talks about the, the scenarios where violence typically takes place. Sure. And he's like, and so, and he breaks down these scenarios into statistically what tends to happen and what's successful and what's not. And he's talking about you get jumped from behind and you're knocked out before you real, you're knocked yes. to the ground before you realize it. Uh, your how your home gets invaded by a gang of five people and you got you're tied up, your family's tied up, and they're threatening lives or yeah, like horrible shit, right? You're like, oh god, like I was just thinking about one to one fighting. But the point that he's getting at is like self-defense is often not a one-to-one -one confrontation. No. And he's like, there's weapons involved, there's surprise attacks, there's huge amounts of terror and fear, and there's no like, like surprise attack, meaning there's no lead up to this. You don't know this thing's coming. So when I'm thinking of the people who are really good in that realm, and I, someone that comes to mind says like a, like a Tim Kennedy yeah, sure. right. Fought in the UFC, Green Beret or whatever, military guy. And he posts a bunch of shit about weapons training. And, and I'm like, well, someone that's trained actually to handle some of those situations, true combat situations and true terrifying scenarios, they're always going to be the best prepared for that stuff. Of course. If we're looking at being prepared for a one-on-one -on -one confrontation where it's like, oh, you want to go? Oh, let's go. That's where I see your your point maybe makes more sense. Yeah. Like the sport, like the, the someone who's training a shitload of no gain well, is a tough grappler and that's like, okay, they've got yeah. a really good chance right now. But let's let's if you don't have a gun. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. And that's and actually that's where we I was saying I think self defense is bullshit because I did a securities course and our our uh, trainer for gun training had been a counter terrorism agent. And the funny thing about it is he is you know, if he was in the airport He'd be getting stopped. Oh, sorry, random check, sir. Come over here. And he used to say that a lot. 
because he'd been in all these different. He's been in Fallujah. He'd been in all these. They places. look at his passport. They're, they're like, like, no, this is guys and terrorists. <laughs> he he was actually an agent for the Australian government, and he was. But he was saying, if someone has the drop on you, you like they have their gun drawn, and you are just standing there, you're dead. If their intent is to kill you, you're. And usually they won't say, hey, free, they'll just be like, block, block, block. And it, it, you know, he's like, you, you turn and you're dead. He's like, if someone has the drop on you, the idea that you could, you know, this quick draw, like this old West bullshit of like, I do a dive roll and I, I John Wick him and I shoulder throw him and shoot him in the face. He's like, dude, if, if someone has a gun and they have the drop on you, he's because he was trying to train us for if you were an armed guard. He's like, if you step out your van and there's a dude in a ski mask with a with a sawn off shotgun in your face, you are dead. You're probably not going to win. That, yeah. that that money is insured. Give them that money. Don't try and and also this is part of the reason I couldn't get around this because I'm in truth as, as tough as I think I am, I am not a killer. They're talking about shooting to center of mass, and I was like, couldn't you just wound them? Couldn't you shoot him in the leg? He's like, what are you talking about? What's your accuracy like? Oh, just ping him outside of his artery and take out like, that LCL. He's like, you'll be shaking. <laughs> and he's like, and don't he talk has about a, LCLs. He has a <laughs> oh, my knee hurts. But like, if 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 that person has come with weapons and they've got that intent, you kill them. That's your job as the security guard, and that's what you got to deal with. Yeah. And I was like, man, I can't, I don't know if I can deal with that. Anyway, this is what I was going to say. Honestly, but that's but that's very different, isn't it? That like that kind of self defense versus. Oh, uh, this kind on the street wants to have a go. Dutz, dutz, let's go. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right? Yeah, sure. But okay, so I'm going to tell a story about a, a friend of mine, which I may have mentioned before. His name is Dylan, and he's from Queensland. And this guy's a total lad, and he'd done Muay Thai for about four or five years. He looks very average. He's a gardener. You know, and I shout out to Dylan. He's got a bunch of tats, but he looks pretty average, bit of a mullet. You know, just looks like a gardener. This guy cut him off. Um, in traffic going up uh, up into North Melbourne. And this actually got filmed from a tram and it went viral. And this guy got out of his car and said, you buddy, cut me off. And Dylan's like, bro. I'm oh, Dylan cut the guy off. Would, allegedly, but this guy had stopped in front of him, I think in a super or something. He said, get out your car. And he was like, dude, you don't want this. And he's like, get out. So <laughs> Dylan gets out, steel cap boots, you know, like cargo shorts just like king g's yeah you know just a dude wearing a gardening hat scent of manure mate this guy's tough he's a lad he's done crime he's tough as hell but he's also a dad and he's also a gardener and this guy's like come on and <laughs> just saying put his hands up like bro you don't want to do this he's like come on and he just leg kicked him just hard hard leg kick and the guy was like oh Kind of dropped the ground. That's not fair. You can't kick. And Dylan's like, what are you, what are you talking about? This like is a street fight, Fisty bro. cuffs. Yeah, just fisty the, cuffs. Yeah. You know, and the, and the like guy, a gentleman. <laughs> like a real gentleman when you cut someone off in traffic and it's road rage. And the guy said, come on. That, you can't. And Dylan's like, bro, you don't want this. And the guy's like, nah. And, and Dylan just went like leg kick again, elbow, and just dropped this guy. And the guy's like, ah. And I was like, bro, you're an idiot. All right, I'll leave you to it. Gets back in the car, drives around him <laughs> and drives off. But apparently, like, someone had this on their mobile phone. And awesome. it, it went viral on the thing. It was like, Gardner beats dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, Bad person gets you, comeuppance. You don't know who you're messing with. I think this is the thing when we talk about street self-defense and stuff. It used to be rarer that people did martial arts. Yeah. Right? But now, it, you know, you speak to people, oh, yeah, I did that when I was a kid or – yeah, I did that for a couple of years, but I gave it up. I believe there was a time when, whether you did Kung Fu, Karate, whatever, like whatever was the popular martial art of your generation, boxing, whatever, if you had that skill, you had an advantage. I think you have less of an advantage now because way more people train. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and at that time, a lot of self-defense was promoted because it was you versus an unskilled attacker. Yeah. What happens when your attacker has skills? Has skills, right? So, like, say that that story about you made Dylan, which I, I think we all love those posts on or those videos <laughs> on Instagram, where it's someone in the car next door filming, and it's someone who can fight. Yeah. And they're being antagonized, and then they just demolish some quit, and you're like, yes, yes. yeah, and that's that's the, what you get. I think that's the fantasy is like that's exactly what I would have done, <laughs> or you know, and it's like that's self defense right there, or that's straight. But that's like the perfect scenario, isn't it? Of course, one-on-one. You, on one. Exactly, one-on-one. On one, you got time, you, you know, like all of those things. Um, 
I I think about like the situations I've been in growing up, say where I've been attacked. Sure. And it was not often like that. No. You know, and I think like, well, what was like what like what do I actually think now would would have been some of the best self defense? I think some of the best self defense would have been being able to throw like a jab straight and just mess up someone's nose before they've even had a chance to escalate the situation. Like you're in a bar, yeah, someone and you and you but, just bang, and then it's like and they're like, oh shit, and it's like over, yeah, right. But I'm like, that's not my jujitsu that does that, no, right. It's like you don't like. I think the the myth with jujitsu, and of course, there's many good self-defense qualities in jiu-jitsu but i'm not going to the like i don't want to be on my back I don't want to be on the ground no i'm not no pulling, guard pulling guard on this shit. no way no nah, so like but maybe I, then it's like well what kind of game do you play if you are a real dominant top game player that's definitely going to carry over better to the streets definitely but also there's i guess the counterpoint to that is you didn't pull guard you got sucker punched and now you're on the ground. Like, yeah, you're half KO'd. You're on your but back. But he's not. The person's gotta, probably not stepping into my guard. They're stomping my face. They're tr- yeah, definitely. I mean, maybe but, I throw up an entanglement, single leg X. I ain't take a pick. <laughs> <laughs> Just invert to the heel. Stop, bro. I got the bite. What? <laughs> 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 no, I. Because I've done self defense seminars. I did a self defense seminar with uh, Steve Maxwell. It was really good, and he talked a lot about Steve Maxwell. where they would have their gun. Because he's military trained. Yeah. He's talking about why you would get the underhook on a certain side because maybe that's where they have their gun yeah. or where do they have their knife. It was really interesting. He talked about the technical stand-up and how that's so important to make distance if you fall into the ground. How you, when you step up, you kind of step away to make space to exit the situation. All this kind of stuff. You know, Jocko has talked about how he feels jiu-jitsu is the best because he's like, if you want to punch me, I can run away. You know, like he, he you need to grab. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like, if you want to keep me in the situation, then you have to find a way to keep me there. Kind of make. I, I don't know. I've never, I've never been in a war zone. I've never been in the military, but I'm guessing to, like hand to hand combat in in an actual battle zone, mm. it's either at a distance with weapons or it becomes close quarters. And once it's close quarters, it is like I want to smother, like I want to stay attached to you because I don't want you grabbing weapons, yeah. right? Yeah. Where it's not like that, maybe on the streets where there's space. space and yeah. Yeah, look, I, I, I can't speak to that. Or I guess all I would say is... Yeah, I'm totally talking out of <laughs> my ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but I mean, for some of you out there who, pro- who have had military training, maybe you can put something in the comments. I guess what I want to talk about here is um, there are schools that build their reputation on self-defense. Now, if you've never trained and you go and do that stuff, that definitely puts you ahead of where you were. What I'm saying is if you do that but you don't do other forms of combat, you're going to get a rude shock when you end up in the street fighting a crackhead who's done Muay Thai for 10 years. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that's... Or he's just angry, he's untrained, but he's just a coiled spring that wants to hurt something. Just, yeah, full of adrenaline. Yeah, like your 18 months of jiu-jitsu probably won't help a lot it's it's a it's a real challenge and so i think this is where i i want to say that even though gi jiu-jitsu has gone down the path of say birambolo and being very technical and all of this i i still think mikey musumechi would be a hard guy to kill (laughs) you know what i mean like i'm not no weapons involved obviously you know like i think i think mikey could fight and i think he could take hits and i think what jiu-jitsu does you could take hits I think so. I think. I mean, no doubt. Yeah. He's, a re- he's a resilient. Did you see him fight um, Muhammad Ali in the? He fought him at the Euros in the absolute. Oh no! Oh, it's massive. Yeah, and he dumps him and thrashes him around, and Mikey just keeps fighting him. I think he can't pass Mikey's guard. What I wanted to say here is, for a long time, I think there was probably a point at which sports jiu-jitsu or competitive jiu-jitsu was a bit divorced from reality. Lachlan Giles did a very funny video where he showed someone, I think it was Mini Dave from Immersion, had like a texter as the knife and it showed Lockie doing like the birambolo to take the back and as self-defense. People were like, that's bullshit. It's like, yeah, of course. It was a total and Dave was just like stabbing him. It was yeah. just a joke. You've seen that uh, video where it's like when your son's a savage and there's like the old chubby guy and his son's there and – and he's trying to do self-defense against him and his son just keeps stabbing him and he's like, no, no, stop, stop. And then eventually he doesn't, he takes the knife off him and gives him a spatula. 
And then he just starts slapping his dad with the spatula <laughs> when he's trying to... No, stop. <laughs> he's just totally f***ing him up. When... I think the thing is whether you do sports jiu-jitsu, competition jiu-jitsu, or you do self-defense, if you, the way you practice it is too rigid, it doesn't factor in the chaotic effect of someone smashing you into a wall or someone kicking you in the balls or something where you, you have to keep fighting even under this duress. Yeah. And I'm not saying you need to simulate those things in your training, but definitely exposing yourself to to other forms of training is helpful. Now, this is my argument for sports jiu-jitsu. Sports jiu-jitsu in terms of no gi jiu-jitsu has evolved to involve more wrestling. And this is where we're going to talk about the effectiveness of wrestling in combat. Recently, there was a stat that was trying to just, it was meant to be in the face of jiu-jitsu that said, uh, maybe Julian's got the stat for me. No, it was something like the, the vast majority, majority of UFC, UFC champions, champions have a wrestling pedigree. Not jiu-jitsu. Not jiu-jitsu. Yeah, jiu-jitsu, comparing wrestling and jiu-jitsu. There like has been some jiu-jitsu champions. There was like, I think it was 18, and then, you guys correct me on this, but it was more like 37 had the, the wrestling. I don't think jiu-jitsu, I think jiu-jitsu had like seven. No, no, no. It was in the team. It was in the team. Okay. But if the... Twenty-eight. Okay, and so you could. And see it was like, what's their primary fighting style? That was how it categorized it. Yeah, and but this is how I, this is how I want to reframe this. People who are training uh, more modern no gi jiu jitsu, I believe, are better prepared because they are looking to wrestle and they are looking to engage in that way, and that is keeping your back off the ground. That is not necessarily pulling guard and yeah. You you might be that player, but. If, if I think about the way it's evolved, I, if I look at anyone from the ADCC, I'd be like, man, I, don't want to, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with any of those guys. And when you see a bunch of them together, you're like, oh, mm. that's, a, that's, a hard, that's a hard group of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I find, or what I have found, is when I'm talking to someone and they're like, I train self-defense. I'm like, oh, yeah, do you fight? No, 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 no. Like, no, it, there's no competition element. No, we just train to be ready. But it's not tested. And I think competition, when someone is just fighting you so hard and you have that exposure to intense stress, which is a competition, someone trying to guillotine your neck off or rip your arm off, you get used to functioning under that stress. I believe that's as close as you can get to simulating a fight other than MMA. That's my, that is my contention. Whereas I feel people who are just practicing self-defense in their gym unless they're doing actual kind of MMA type rounds where punching and kneeing and, you know, that is involved, I, I feel possibly that you, you, you could be better prepared if you're doing competitions. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. What's your take on that, Joseph? I think maybe. In ter- <laughs> you know, maybe. just in, yeah. well, you know, if you're doing that bullshit self-defense stuff in some old school martial arts academy that's actually kind of divorced from the way combat works. Yeah. Wholeheartedly agree. But you know, if you are, if you're like, Oh no, bro. Like we train with, we train with like blunted knives and we with the lot. Sometimes we turn the lights off and sometimes the, we do drills where the group has to attack one person in the darkness. And yeah. Yeah. You're like, okay. Well, actually you're, you're way more closer to the scenario than my competition grappling. Sure. Cause the competition is still an agreed start time. The round goes for this long. Here are the rules. You know, sure. So I think that there's, but you know, I can only imagine, and it's not a world I've been in myself. I can only imagine there's not a lot of places that really take it to that degree because it's fucking intense. Yeah, and it's not the kind of place where not, people want to come in and train three, four times a week <laughs> and have a good time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably something that more lends itself to um, special ops, military people that are in that life that need, like, really rely yeah, on those skills. skills. Um, so, you know, yeah, if we're talking about what's something that the, like the general population can get into that they're likely to do and stick with for a period of time that is going to give them a, a significant enough skill set, I think like that modern kind of no gi jiu-jitsu. Wrestling. It, wrestling, it makes you tough. It makes you athletic. It teaches yeah. you to be aggressive and fast. And it also teaches you a lot of great like techniques that are going to somebody up so yeah i agree from that point of view yeah and and look i mean this is this is the thing we're all trying to find a way to translate it to our lives 
it, for most of us, it will be hard for us to incorporate ourselves into like a hardcore knife fighting syndicate. <laughs> you know, like that's maybe that's just not your life. Yeah. So, all right, what am I going to do? I, I don't know any better, but I also don't want to be a victim. I believe if you start to learn more wrestling and you develop a game which is not on your back, you know, even though there's plenty of value to the guard and don't get me wrong, I'm, I've been a guard player most of my life. Definitely now I'm not doing that. I am doing more wrestling. I am doing more judo. I'm learning to fight from my feet. I actually believe that this is a, a safer place to be than on the ground. Yeah, I've actually been thinking about taking up some um, some Thai boxing or boxing Yeah, yeah. recently. Yeah, I've been like, yeah, it could be cool. Like it, to me, right, I I've, I did a bit of kind of MMA stuff early on in my jiu-jitsu career. Mm. But I know like if we start doing some some sparring and yeah. you, I'm going to be like flinching, I'm like, oh, oh I'm so underprepared for this. Yeah. Like a black belt in jiu-jitsu means nothing when I'm like putting my head down and closing my eyes when you're throwing fists, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm like, yeah, actually, I think that would kind of really be nice just to get a bit of that. Definitely, definitely. So if you're out there and you're and you're not sure, I guess what you can take from this discussion is whether you do train in a more traditional self-defense scenario, it could be worthwhile if you're not – you might already be doing this, so don't let me preach to the converted. Take some time to get yourself around – some more like wrestling scenario stuff where you someone just takes you down and you weren't ready for it and you've got to try and scramble up to your feet they're pinning you it's hard same thing if you're tenacity if, i think that's what wrestlers have right they do. it's, it's they the tenacity do thing not quit yeah and that's and i think that's why we see their success in mma you know because they're just fucking hard workers and they refuse to lose yeah shout out parry and yeah. it's you know <laughs> yeah. and it's like and that's it's a quality and it's this hard-nosed thing that yeah, a lot of jiu-jitsu people have that too, but on the whole, we we don't have that. We're kind of soft in comparison. Humans in general. <laughs> yeah, in comparison to that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. So, good one. Thanks, fam. Peace.